Hey there, Hero. It's David H. Lawrence, the 17th. Thank you so much for joining me this morning. I want to talk to you this morning about a human condition. And <clears throat> it's not one of those things that I'm going to get really hyped up about and, and excited about. I'm, I'm going to show concern more than anything. And what I'm talking about is fear. Um, we are human beings. We live in a world that is filled with threats and filled with distractions and filled with uh, things that can hurt us, can even kill us. And so fear plays a very protective role in our lives. And as we get started here this morning, I'm going to be, I'm running things all by myself. So please feel free to uh, jump in, say hello, uh, help me uh, understand where you're, where you're watching from. If you're watching this on a replay, you can still use the comments below this, whether you're watching on Facebook, on YouTube, on, uh, uh, on LinkedIn, wherever it is. Take a moment in the comments below, uh, just jot down who you are, what you're saying. If you're already recognized by StreamYard, uh, I'll see your name. If you haven't gone that far yet, I'll see Facebook user or LinkedIn user or YouTube user. Um, but the subject matter today is about fear. And it's not the kind of thing that people love talking about. You know, I get that. It's like, uh, I, uh, I would rather just like go on with the rest of my day and not really worry about this, if that's okay with you. Um, but fear can really hurt us. It can slow us down. It can stop our growth entirely in an effort to protect us. I get that. So uh, today, what I want to share with you are the three biggest fears we have when we're starting something new and how to completely and utterly crush those fears. Now, as I said at the very beginning of this, um, fears are, fear itself is a very useful thing. Imagine yourself in a new situation. Imagine yourself in a new city or, uh, you know, renting a car that you've never driven before you can feel the fear kind of bubble up a little bit as you just begin to deal with that situation. So, you know, you have this uh, moment when you say, okay, I'm not sure where I'm going. I'm not sure uh, what, what wayposts along the way there are that I need to pay attention to. I don't even know what I don't know. And so today, what we're going to look at, because for the last couple of weeks, I've been sharing my best stuff. I've been sharing mastering home-based voiceover uh, in anticipation of offering entry registration to my VO Heroes Pro um, uh, package this year, the training package this year. And you can go there and, and register if you'd like at some point. It, it has to be today, though, because today is the last day of registration. Uh, everything closes down tonight at this link um, at midnight. But I wanted to share with you what I heard people saying in the questions that I asked them to post to me. I said, look, I'm going to be answering questions after all the lessons. What are your biggest questions? What are the things that have always puzzled you about voiceover? What are the things that make you stop and go, yeah, what, what, what about the equipment? What about, I'm too old. I, I, you know, is there any work for me? I mean, everybody has questions and most of them, most of those questions are based in fear. Um, many of them are just sort of, you know, curious, uh, curious uh, things that you, maybe you just don't know, but you're not really fearful of, but the vast preponderance of them the vast preponderance of them are all about fear. And so today I want to talk to you about that. So I'm going to try something for the very first time. I don't know if this is going to work. Ah, it did work. Our three biggest fears. As we approach a new situation, um, a new tool, a new knowledge base, a new set of skills that we're trying to learn, there's always this hesitation. 
And you can recognize that hesitation right then and there as manifestations of fear. And as I said, <clears throat> you know, fear can be a great thing. Fear can keep us safe. Fear can keep us alive. You know, we have that little critter brain in the, in, in the back of our head uh, that is constantly scanning, looking for threats and checking to see if we're still alive and are we safe? Do we have to be worried about something? Do we have to be on the defensive about something? And we don't even recognize it because so much in our modern world is designed to protect us from threats. We have, you know, clothing and, and abodes and vehicles and uh, relationships with others that maybe weren't there when we were kind of roaming the earth as nomads and, and relying on our own knowledge and our own observations of the world. So I just, I want to share these with you because I think something that you can recognize, something that is known, is able to be dealt with. And if, as I do this, you have questions about what I'm doing or you have uh, comments, uh, if you'd like to like this right now, I'd be happy. But one thing I would like you to do is if you're going to get some benefit from this, if you feel like this is valuable, please hit the share button, tell your friends, let them know that this is going on. It's going to be a recording and you'll still be able to add your comments uh, below this when you, um, even if you're watching the, the playback, even if you're watching the recording. But I would love to know what's going on. So I'm just going to look at the comments real quick and see if anybody's posted anything. I'd love to know where you're watching. I'd love to know what your situation is. Are you a voice talent? Are you an actor? Uh, and what your biggest fear is. It might be one of the three that we're about to share. It might be something totally different. Um, I love talking about this because it is shining a bright light on something that people don't like to talk about. Nobody likes to say, I'm afraid. I get that. Nobody likes to say, well, I don't know what's going to happen, so I'm just going to say no. Uh, there are very few people that are born with the notion that uh, fear is kind of optional. You kind of learn this, and that's what we're going to do today because we're going to take a look at these big fears, and then we're going to uh, show you how to get rid of these big fears, to recognize them and then vanquish them. So again, <clears throat> let me know where you're uh, watching from. Give me your name. Uh, just put it in the comments below this, and if you have any questions, you can always ask those questions uh, in the comments below, no matter what channel you're watching it. So what is the biggest fear that we have or the biggest fears that we have? Well, one of the first ones is we have a fear of the unknown. So when you're presented with something that you've never been presented with before or uh, an option that maybe you've never chosen before, um, you're presented with an opportunity that's just a little scary that you are not sure you will uh, like or understand or get along with everybody else who's doing the same thing, like, you know, a new, uh, a new pursuit in your personal life or a new pursuit in your business life or, uh, you know, my course. I, it's, it's always that you can, and you can tell that moment because it's like you're, you're, you're standing there and... I don't know what's going to happen. This could be really painful. This could be hard to accomplish. This could be confusing. I don't know what's going on here. So I experience fear. And that's completely natural. It's completely expected. And it can be, as most fears can be, protective. If it's such a big thing, and there are so many things that are unknown, and sometimes those things that are unknown interact with one another. You know, if I mistake, make a mistake over here, or if I screw things up over here, it's going to make me screw things up over here. I'm going to waste time, or I'm going to waste money, or I'm going to waste an effort if I, if I can't do this. If I'm, yeah. So fear of the unknown is one of the biggest fears that we have. And I can't wait to share with you how I feel about that. The second fear that we have 
is we have a fear of failure. We live in a world that is getting more and more and more invasive into what we're doing right now and how well we're doing it. I look at all the filters that people can use on the Insta and on TikTok and on other social networks, and most of them revolve around putting forward this notion that we're succeeding. We're winning. We're awesome. We're not failing. We don't have problems. We're not we're not facing any challenges. Certainly we're not losing. We look beautiful and we're doing these things that are great and that thing that's great. You know, it's all about putting forward this this image that we have of of never facing failure. And we face failure every single moment of our lives. Walk out of a room and you forgot why you came into the room, what you were in there looking for, you know, that's failure. I came in here for a piece of paper and I can't find it. Why am I such a failure? So the fear of failure is something that can just stop us dead in our tracks. And I actually adore failing. I, just as a little aside, I adore failing. I adore the notion that uh, I messed something up, that I did something wrong, that I tried, but I failed. Because it gives me an opportunity to analyze what I did, what I could have done better, and how I could have handled it differently. You learn from failure. Most people don't, most people don't remember that as they're failing or just after they're failed when they, they feel a little embarrassed about that failure. Uh, Linda Montana says, I am uh, working, uh, I'm an on-camera actress, voiceover talent, stage actress, singer, trick roper. Wow, I wonder how you felt when you first started learning trick roping from the Los Angeles area, Linda Montana. Thank you, Linda, and you're one of my new pros, I believe. If I if I recognize your your face, I've been what I've been doing is spending the last few days putting together welcome kits and getting everybody matriculated into VO Heroes Pro, and so I've been getting to know my new uh, students based on their uh, network presence, their name, their 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 uh, social. Uh, and we're in the world they live because I have students all over the place. Welcome, Linda. Thank you for joining us. So we have this fear of failure. And the third fear is one that, oh, hey, Hopper. Hopper's here. Hopper Stone, everybody. Failure is just another way to learn not to do something. He's watching on, uh, on YouTube. Thank you for joining me, Hopper. I appreciate it. Hopper's one of my pros. The third uh, fear that we have, and these, are, these are three fears that are huge. We have tons more. There's plenty where these came from, but these are the ones that I really wanted to help identify with you because although I feel like all of our fears have ways of being approached that can be useful, um, these are the ones that we tend to experience when we're starting a big new thing. And, you know, just as an example, VO Heroes Pro is a big new thing. It's asking a lot of you. It's asking a lot of your time. It's asking a lot of your effort. It's asking a lot of money. I get that. And so that amplifies the fears that we have. And this third fear is not a fear that you might expect. It's, it's as a, the subhead says, number three might just surprise you. You know, we tend to assign fears to being things that are negative or dark or or dangerous. What the third fear is that we have a fear of success. We have from time to time this moment where we think to ourselves, wow, what if I get what I want? You know, there's that phrase, be careful what you wish for, because you just might get it. That is the embodiment of two things, the fear of success, as well as not really having a good idea of what you're asking about. But it's also the fear of success. If you get 
that commercial gig. Like I'm so proud of of my client uh, Bethany uh, for getting her new Starbucks, uh, you know, commercial, which might be the beginning of something really big for her. Bethany Arrington Peck, who's in Chicago, she joined Via Heroes Pro a year or two ago, and she just started putting on social media this week her new Starbucks commercial, and it's gorgeous. It's all about caramel caramel flavored coffee and her voice is just buttery smooth. Just, I'm so proud of her. Um, we start these things and we don't know where it's going. And yeah, we might fail at it or we might, you know, have to encounter some things that we don't know all that much about those first two failures, but we also might be great at it. And oh my God, does that bring a whole new set of responsibilities? You know, all of a sudden now, oh, I'm good at this. I, I have to get better at this. I have to be great at this. Uh, now that I'm good at this, I'm going to be expected to do this all the time. We have this fear of actually acquiring what we want and achieving what we desire. So tell me in the comments below while I take a sip of my cinnamon coffee. Uh, tell me at caramel cinnamon coffee. Tell me in the in the comments below um, if these fears resonate with you. If these fears mean something to you. If you've ever experienced these fears before. At this point, everybody who's watching should be typing yes because it's a pretty universal human condition. Um, because this third fear, the fear of success, is so interesting, it's talked about all the time. And one of the quotes that you hear on a regular basis is often misattributed to Nelson Mandela, but it was actually in a book by Marianne Williamson uh, called A Return to Love. And it goes like this, our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Mwah, mwah, mwah. Actually, who are you not to be? Your playing small doesn't serve the world. You know, this quote is so powerful, and however you feel about uh, people who are all about making your life, you know, just a better place by manifesting that, however you feel about uh, the secret, whatever it is about it, this is a quote that you can take from the corpus of work of those people, those inspirational speakers that you have. This is a quote that you can take and use. Because, and I'm just going to stop for just a second, I want to talk to you. We are, we are performers. Too late, if you don't think you're a performer as a voice talent or an actor, you are already an actor. You are already a performer. Uh, you know, Hopper, I've told him a million times, too late, you're an actor. I know you might think not, but you are. And if you're watching this, you're an actor. You're here because this is interesting to you. So when we make that momentary decision to become a performer, to put ourselves up in front of others, on stage, on camera, on mic, when we decide that we're going to put ourselves forward and do something that other people wouldn't even dream of doing, they would rather put sharp sticks in their eyes than put themselves out there that way. That's a moment where we're making the decision to embrace success. We don't do this to be unsuccessful. We don't do this to struggle, it's not that there, I guess there are some artists who enjoy the notion of being a struggling artist, living in their little garret and eating their gruel and scraps they find that the mice leave behind. I don't know. But I want to be happy. I want to be successful. I want to be someone who makes other people laugh and other people cry and think and change their world. I want to be successful. So... <clears throat> This quote is something that I would ask you to really at least grab the essence of. Obviously, you don't want to, you know, learn it by heart, but God, this is 
such a powerful thing. When you shift your mind, and how you think about your pursuit of this line of work and how you do so happily and proudly and not embarrassingly or oh shucks no i'm just a i'm an i'm a guy yeah i'm a, i'm just an actor i'm just a little actor i mean own it take the stage hit your spot be ready when the engineer points his his finger at you and says go this is a moment for you to enjoy and there is nothing that you should think you need to be embarrassed about or look at as though who am I to do this? You, you are you. If not you, then who? There's a reason you were inspired to become an actor, a voice talent, a performer in general. And that is why it should be you. So what a, what a, what a great quote. It's just so awesome. All right. You want to vanquish those fears? You want to take a look at those fears that I was talking about before and vanquish them, right? So just real quickly, let's remind you, fear of the unknown, fear of failure, and fear of success. The three biggest fears we have as performers, right? So how do we vanquish those fears? Well, the first thing we need to do is kind of a a, a, a bipolar approach, a, a bifurcated approach. Whenever you start to approach something and you have this fear of the unknown uh, or fear of failure or fear of success, question your assumptions. Often our fear is based on things that we think are true, that we think are going to be dangerous or are going to be weird or are going to be insurmountable or are going to be expensive, or aren't going to be valuable, right? Question all of your assumptions. Question all of them, especially what you've been told. Um, as, I, as I was opening every one of the lessons in Mastering Home-Based VoiceOver uh, over the last couple of weeks, I asked people to do three things for me. I love the threes, right? Everything's lovely in threes. Um, I ask people to uh, get rid of distractions, which I appreciate you doing as well here today. Um, not saying, oh, yeah, I already knew that. Uh, because you never know something about it you might not have known. And, you know, that doesn't apply to me. I'm special. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not who you're talking to, David. Okay, if you could do all three of those things, that would be great. And questioning your assumptions is part of that, I knew that already, and also that doesn't apply to me. Because we go looking for knowledge, and sometimes we take the shortest path to another human being to find that knowledge, whether or not that other human being knows what the hell they're talking about or not. We figure that if somebody's willing to share information with us, it must be true. And we sometimes tend to surround ourselves with people who agree with us. We tend to be in a silo of information or a silo of attitude or a silo of uh, orientation. And psychologists have a word for what happens when we only take the information from the people that we surround ourselves with or happen to know or have been told know what they're talking about or just simply speak up and that's called confirmation bias. Well. If this person said it was true, well, then it has to be true. And now I think it's true. So in the future, as I go forward, I'm going to apply this bias to everything that I'm learning. And if it agrees with what I already know, great. If it doesn't, I'm rejecting it. Sound familiar? Politics, anybody? Religion, anybody? Health, anybody? So the first thing I would ask you to do is the moment you begin to feel this fear, any fear, question your assumptions. Why are you thinking that this is a moment to be fearful? There are times when you have completely valid questions, completely valid assumptions. You know, I have developed a fear when I go to, uh, because I've fallen twice in the last two years at SoFi Stadium going to the Rams games. I'm a big Rams fan. 
Uh, I hope that doesn't drive anybody away. Uh, but we got ours last Thursday. <laughs> anyway, I've tripped over curbs at SoFi Stadium because they're not well lit and because I'm not, you know, 18 anymore and I don't heal as fast and I've been hurt a couple of times. And so now I have a very healthy fear of walking from the parking lot to the stadium to see the games and back because I need to be careful of the curbs. Okay, reasonable thing to do. And I'm also telling others, watch the curb, be careful, there's a curb there, you know? So <clears throat> we often have a situation where, yeah, and I can assume, by the way, that those curbs are still gonna be there next, next week at the next game. But sometimes we make assumptions about things that aren't true. We assume something is going to be too hard. We assume something is going to be too complex. We assume something is not going to have the value that we are paying in terms of cost. You know, just as an example, Vio Heroes Pro, $2,995. Incredibly expensive. Depending upon how you look at the value, what you get for that nearly $3,000. For many people who have joined me as a pro, they have told me privately, this is really, really inexpensive for what you get. Are you sure this is the price that you want it to be at? Now, nobody ever says, you know, here, let me give you more money. I get that. But the point is, people have issues with value versus price. And getting out of the silo that you've been encased in, that you find safety in, that you find less fear in, because what other people are telling you confirms what you already believe to be true, that exercise of looking around and going, huh, what do you have to say about this? What are your thoughts? And even if you don't <clears throat> agree with them, even if you don't have a, an immediate, oh, I yes, let's do that. Oh, this is good. Hmm. Trader Joe's winter blend, wintry blend. I don't know. At least it gives you the opportunity to compare what they have to say with what you believe. And if you open your mind up, sometimes you are presented with things that you hadn't considered before. And that can really help you with that fear of the unknown. Now you know some things. And there's also that moment when you just get started and you start to do things that are um, effective and uh, you can repeat and you like them and they sound great or they look great on camera, whatever it is. All of a sudden now you have things that are known as opposed to being fearful of the unknown. So question your assumptions, get out of the silo and compare what you think you know, and what you've been told with what may actually be true. Is this, is this hitting something with you? Pop in the comments and let me know if that helps, all right? And I'll go on to number two. Here's another way to vanquish the fears, and that is to do solid, open to possibilities, not housed in your silo. I la la la, I can't hear you. I don't know what you're talking about. It doesn't agree with what I already know. Doing your research. If you were to go online and look for electric cars, some people have fears of electric cars because of the crashes that we see. My mom is like, I don't want to drive. I'll, 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 the, the car will take over and, and I'll crash. Uh, I don't think she actually thinks that anymore. She's kind of done her research and she's open to the possibilities. But I think she likes her ICE car more. She likes her, her Nissan. Anyway, um, <clears throat> if you do solid research, if you do research that is expansive, is deep, I love when people go and research me and what I teach on voiceover. I love when they go and research my background, uh, my body of work, my credits, both on camera and on mic. I love when they do that, even when they find things that they don't like, or they find things where I've made a mistake. Oh my God. I love when they find that because it makes me human. And it confirms for them, if they're open to what they see, the possibility of what I'm offering, it confirms for them that I can be a source of help, 
a source of support, uh, a source of wisdom, a source of experience. You know, maybe you don't want to do this. Try this instead. And that, to me, is one of the biggest things you can do because the more you're armed with valid information, with valid facts and knowledge, and not just on the surface, not just kind of like, quote, reading the five-star reviews, but actually digging deep and looking at why what you're looking at is what it is to you, why you see negative things or why you see positive things. Um, doing that research, just, you know, I'm not saying brief research. I'm not saying days and weeks and months and years of research. I know plenty of people who get mired in becoming professional researchers. You know, well, I haven't learned enough about this yet, so I'm just going to wait. You know, figure out how to be appropriate for you. But do solid, open to possibilities research to give yourself additional tools to make the decisions that you need to make to overcome these fears. And then finally, get support from someone you trust. I don't care if it's me or some other coach or someone who is not only successful in our business, but talks about what they've done to become successful. They haven't hidden their success. You know, I, I just feel like we often just turn to whoever's closest to us, whoever's within the closest five feet of us. You know, we're at some workshop or class or something or some, you know, actor meetup or something. And we go, hey, have you ever taken voiceover? Do you know anything about voiceover? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, you can do it all on your own. You know, just don't use a USB microphone. You know, <clears throat> if you have someone by your side, if you have someone that will give you their time and their knowledge, their experience both with what to do and what to avoid, what not to do, if you have someone in your life that you can rely on, that you can pop a quick message to on a message board or give a quick phone call to or meet online, you know, either in a class setting or in a private setting, if they have resources that you can take advantage of, that you know have worked for other people. Even if they haven't worked for everybody, they have worked for somebody. And maybe that somebody is just like you on a course to get better and better and better at what they do. Having somebody in your corner, having a coach or a consultant or a confidant or a peer that you can walk this walk together. It doesn't have to be somebody that you're paying. It can be somebody who is willing to take the journey with you. It may be somebody with whom you trade money or uh, uh, consideration of some sort for what they give you in return. Maybe it's a, a friend who's also an actor or a voice talent who you read for when they're doing auditions or you, um, you know, they bounce ideas off of you or you bounce ideas off of them. What was it that uh, Robert Ferris, my client, said? He said, you can go far alone, but you can go much farther together. I'm sure I'm mangling that totally with what he says. Um, but one of the things that I've seen over and over and over again when people are uh, my clients and my students is they say that the resources are part of the things that carried them from where they were to where they want to be. So find that in your life. You know people like that. And not just random strangers who you think might know something, because, man, that can be the path to destruction. Because if you rely on something that isn't solid, open to possibilities research, that is in your silo and is part of your assumptions and it agrees with what you think is already true, you know, think of all the time that you waste following that path that you got to kind of come back to and then walk down a different path to get the right results. So if you have somebody that you can walk with, somebody that supports you, somebody that cares about your success, um, 
you know, Hopper is here and I've just been watching his journey over the last year or two. And when things start happening, I think he just got representation or no, he just joined a, a, a casting site that requires you to be approved to be on it. You can't just join the casting site. Hopper, if you could elucidate, I, I you know, I think it's Voquin. I'm not sure. But <clears throat> whatever the casting site is, you can't just join and then good. I'm a professional. I'm on this casting site. Um, this one in particular, you have to kind of show them what you're capable of doing. They have to be able to hear your samples and then they'll let you know if you can be on the casting site. You know, like in the old days before the democratization of access made it possible for everybody, including my dumb cousin Hugo, uh, who should go nowhere near a microphone, <laughs> to be near a microphone. Because it doesn't matter. They, you, don't, you don't have to be licensed. You don't have to be um, tested. You don't have to have a certification, right? Uh, Hopper says he was approved on Voquint and his recording space was verified. So what, what happens is you have to record something from them and uh, they, they test the, the noise floor. So it's, it's a little bit of a hump, but I'm thinking that, you know, the questions that he's asked over the last couple of years and the, the equipment that he's gotten and the training that he's gotten was helpful. So um, all of these three things, question your assumptions and get out of the silo. This is about acquiring knowledge of veracity, you know, something that's actually useful and true. Uh, solid open to possibilities research and getting support from someone you trust, someone who you respect. All of these things allow me to sum up what I have to say about vanquishing fear with the following. In the end, facts and knowledge vanquish, conquer, destroy, kill, get rid of, obviate fear. In the end, facts and knowledge conquer fear. So you've heard the phrase uh, X withers in the sunlight, you know, uh, falsity, uh, misinformation, uh, failure, failure withers when you bring it out into the open and apply actual facts and knowledge to it, fear goes away. Fear is at the very least lessened and made tolerable, fear goes away. I, um, I'm happy to spend more time with you on this. I'm happy to answer your questions. If you put those questions in the comments below, I'll answer them as they come up. One moment, I'm enjoying my coffee. Um, this can be a huge thing. And if you've always wanted to move forward with your career in this business, if you've always wanted to get better at both on mic and on camera acting, because one of the very basic tenets of my VO Heroes Pro curriculum is that it's not just about your voiceover. It's about everything else that you do in the world of being an actor, in the world of performing. Uh, being a better voiceover actor makes you a better stage actor. You understand things about sound and volume and tone and reaching the rafters that you didn't before because you're now much more aware of how your voice works. And it also makes you a better on-camera actor one of the very basic rules about on-camera acting, for those of you who are not on-camera actors, you're here and you're just voice talent. And I don't mean just voice talent as in, oh, you're just voice talent. I mean, this is what you concentrate on. 
you've told yourself, your assumption is no one would want to see this face on camera. And I realize that as I'm saying that phrase, a lot of people who think only beautiful people do on camera work, they say, yeah, you're right, David. Nobody wants to see that face on camera. I thought that for the longest time. And then I thought to myself, well, there's, there's not so beautiful people on camera. There's goofy looking people on camera. They make the beautiful people look better, right? When you understand how to use your voice in that space, there's one fairly constant rule. And that is, for those of you that aren't on camera actors, you might not know this, but when you're shooting on camera, there are distances from the camera sizes of the shot. From very tight close-ups to medium close-ups to what this is, a head and shoulder shot to what's called a cowboy shot, two shots with two cat actors in them, uh, two very wide angles. And as those things are shot, how actors use their voice makes all the difference in the world. The larger the shot, the louder your voice usually is for the exact same part of the script. Because the viewer needs to be comfortable with how close they are virtually from the action. So if somebody's a long distance away, you got people walking along a field somewhere, somebody who's that far away isn't gonna be able to hear them if they're whispering to each other. So when you're doing your lines as an on-camera actor, you have to be aware of how big the shot is and you adjust your volume in that way and vice versa. If it's a really tight shot of two people in an intimate situation, you talk very softly compared to what you would in a wide shot. So much so that if you were on set somewhere and they were shooting a very tight shot, maybe a, a an eyes only shot and the person was talking, you probably couldn't hear them even 10 feet away because they're talking so softly, right? That's the kind of thing. Oh, thank you, Mike. I appreciate that. Uh, Mike Russo said, the knowledge I got from you in your course has been invaluable. Thank you so much. I appreciate you joining us. I really do. Mike is awesome. Um, that knowledge of how the various volume levels of, I was, I was just thinking um, about when I auditioned for Heroes, um, I had no idea how big the shot was on the audition camera that they were shooting my audition with. I was a good 10, 12 feet away from the camera, but I really wanted to bring the volume down for the character because he was really creepy and really intense. And I did my first take and the director of the episode was in the uh, audition room and he said, oh, I love this. Bring your chair right out. I want you to, and he said to the casting director, I want you to get a nice tight shot on him. I want this. I want you to bring your chair right up to the camera. I want to, you know, treat this as a close up. So I was like, oh, okay, cool. So I bring my, my chair all the way up to the camera, maybe now like three feet away from the camera. And, you know, the casting director says, gotcha, in focus and all that. And I do the scene again. And in my eye line, just off my eye line, there was this woman who was also, there were 11 people in my audition space for heroes, 11 people. For those of you that do on camera auditions, that never happens. But in this case, it did. And this woman uh, was just off camera. And when I was finished with my scene, I saw her shudder. I saw her visibly shudder. And I checked myself real quick and I said, is it cold in here? Mm, not that much. Maybe I, maybe I affected her. That woman happened to be the head of casting at NBC. But knowing that, that situation of volume and voice and distance and adjustment, as you get better at being a great voice talent, you become a better stage actor, a better on-camera actor, a better commercial actor, a better sketch comedy actor, a better improv artist, and vice versa. One of the courses inside the big curriculum, the Vio Heroes Pro Curriculum, is all about the fact that the different categories of work that we do all use the same muscles. They all use the same acting chops that we have inside us. The course is called Mutual Muscles because people often have this, they've been told or they assume or in that silo, other people have said, oh, voiceover, can't do voiceover. Nobody's gonna, too much, too many people going after it, not enough work. 
Well, go back and, and watch some of the lessons if you want to from Mastering Home-Based VoiceOver. They'll be up for another couple of days. Um, and then I'll be bringing them down. Um, but one of the things that I talk about is the amount of opportunity in VoiceOver that we don't see sitting in our den or kitchen or studio or office or home uh, or bedroom, our closet, under the stairs, in the basement, wherever we are in our little space, we don't see all the opportunities that are going on all around the world. And our slice of the industry, our slice of the performance industry, voiceover, was the very first to break down the barriers of geographic availability. Used to be, when I was growing up in Cleveland, the only thing I'd know about was Cleveland produced commercials. Cleveland radio shows, Cleveland stage productions, Cleveland television. That was it, because that's where I was. Today, you know this, there is no limitation on where you can market yourself, where you'll find opportunities. We talk about this in almost every single one of our business-related classes, and there's nearly 40 classes in the curriculum, and there's soon to be 50 because we're adding this new thing, and I wanna to talk to you about it real quick, about this notion of burnishing your stuff. Um, we have opportunities that we never had before. And so now you can, as a couple of weeks ago, I did get booked on a job in London, being done over a, a, an internet connection. Uh, you can be booked on camera somewhere, you know, in another country. You, you These things are now much more likely and much more possible, and you can put your stuff out there. You can say, as Hopper is going to say on, uh, on uh, or Hopper has said, and what he's going to be showing on Volquin is, Volquin's based in the UK. Well, now he's able to, you know, open up his little suitcase of samples, show his wares, to people all around the world. You can certainly do that for decades with voice one, two, three, but it wasn't so much the case in on camera. So Mike says, uh, oh, the knowledge you got from the podcast with Patrick Tucker. Yeah, baby. Yeah, I love it. I love it. All right. Thank you, Mike. Thank you so much. Uh, again, I'm going to wrap this up here soon. If we don't have actual questions, hopefully I've given you some, some usefulness uh, some, some, uh, tools, but I do want to say that you only have until midnight tonight. And this is on, uh, Saturday, September 10th, 2022. That's when we're doing this live. It's now 10 minutes to 11 AM on the West coast. And so you have just over 13 hours. Uh, if you're going to make a difference in your future, and you want uh, some better things to assume, some better knowledge to have, some really deep facts. If you want to get out of your silo and consider other people's suggestions, there are things in our voiceover silo that I am often taken to task with in terms of my equipment, in terms of my editing process, and part of it is it just doesn't agree with what others have been taught. It just doesn't agree with what others have heard. And if you want to do, be spoon fed actually, open to possibility, really solid research. And if you want someone to walk with you, if you want someone to take this journey with you and support you along the way, I would love to be that person. If it's not me, find somebody. But if you'd like someone who knows what they're doing, happily says, I love this, I prefer this. I don't usually treat people as a coach would treat people. I don't say things like, hmm, you don't know what microphone to use. Well, what microphone would you feel best using? What would make you feel happiest? I'm not that kind of guy. I'm not a coach. I'm like, this is the microphone you should get. This is the microphone you should get. This is the one I use every day. That's not the microphone I'm using right now, but that's the one. And if, in fact, I give you that microphone if you join VO Heroes Pro. I give you the gear. And what I thought was really interesting is that 
the the Starbucks spot that I saw Bethany talking about, uh, she's still in her booth with her AT2020 USB Plus, my microphone that she got as part of joining Vio Heroes Pro a year or two ago. And I, I, if you want those things, I have those things for you. And I'd love for you to join Vio Heroes Pro. If you go to voheroes.com slash go, anytime before midnight tonight, you can join up. You're instantly dropped into the curriculum and the community. You'll get the equipment. You'll get all these bonuses, including these brand new courses that are going to be released starting at the beginning of October. Monthly audition sprints called VO Kickstart. Um, one of the things that people are fearful of is what happens if I do get an agent? What happens if I do start jumping onto the casting sites and I do start getting auditions? I don't even know how to respond to those auditions. I mean, I think I do, but who knows? Who knows? Well, why don't you know? Let's get you knowing. So what I've designed uh, is this monthly sprint. Sprint, David? What do you mean? Okay. Imagine you're sitting there on the first weekday of the month. So it goes for the first three full weeks of the month. And all my existing pros, the users that are watching, users that are watching, you're going to be uh, in these courses automatically. You get these as part of your membership. Other people will be invited. The public will be invited. It'll be $79 per sprint per month. So you get it as part of VO Heroes Pro. So first weekday of the month, Monday, October, whatever it is, 4th. You get an email at noon, precisely at noon that says, hey there, Hopper. Hey there, Mike. Hey there, Linda. Hey there, uh, whoever else is watching. Uh, you've got a voiceover audition. Wait, what? I do? Yep, all the details are at this link on voheroes.com. You click the link, and all of a sudden you're presented with a, a, a script that you need to record, and you create an MP3 of that, and you upload it right on that page. I get it. I listen to it, and I let you know if it's okay. And you have to do it by a deadline, usually 24 hours after you get the uh, initial notice that you have an audition request. And then the next day, you get the same thing. And the day after that. And the day after that. Every day of the week for three full weeks. Every weekday for three full weeks. Now, what's the point of all this? The point is to recreate what you will be encountering, what Hopper is about to or is already encountered with the things that he is receiving from the different casting sites. This is just one a day. And what I want you to do is get a bunch of things from this. I want you to get the muscle memory of responding to an audition. Oh, I've got the audition. I don't have to worry about setting up my gear because it's already set up. I don't have to worry about it if it's not set up because I know how to set it up quickly. Um, I, I don't have to worry about my recording levels because I have my volume input level set perfectly. I don't have to worry about how the final file is going to be exported because I know how to normalize it and I know how to put it in a particular format. I don't even have to worry about how the uh, file name is going to be on my final uploaded file because I know how to look for that in the audition request, how the casting person wants me to name the file. These are things that casting people want you to do accurately. You know, if you've done any auditions at all, you've encountered the instructions in an audition, not only what the character is doing, not only the script, not only what the project is about, who the client is, but how to upload things and how to label your files. Is the file a file that has the right settings, the right uh, the right uh, bit rate, the right sampling rate, uh, the right uh, peak peak level, the right volume, is all that right? And after you've done this over and over and over again for a while, and this is, by the way, this is all part, this is one little piece of the entire program. Once you get used to that, once you get that down, now 
You don't have to worry about it anymore. You don't have to spend any time on it anymore. You can just do it as a matter of course, and you can spend all that extra time that you're saving considering your performance, spending your time asking who you're talking to, asking who your audience of one is. I'm kind of sharing with you what we teach in our commercial classes, asking what the job is that they're trying to accomplish. Are they trying to get their floors clean? Are they trying to, you know, in terms of commercials, are they trying to buy a new car? Are they trying to be loved by their family for serving them a great macaroni and cheese at dinner? Whatever their job is, your job is to help them get that job done. That's the core of doing commercial work. Now you can concentrate on that rather than, okay, what level did I need to set Audacity at to get the right volume? What What's the peak normalization? Minus 3 dB, minus 1 dB. What is it? What do I drag my stuff onto? Is it audio cupcake? What? All of these things become second nature once you've done them a lot. And then you can turn your attention to things that change all the time. Who you are, who you're talking to, what your job is, what your role is in the project, right? So all of these things will happen on a daily basis for 15 weekdays, and you'll be rated on your response just like you would be quietly and silently by a casting director. Does that sound good? It's all part of the curriculum now. In fact, we're in beta testing with it right now. I've got a few of my pros uh, doing September's, one which is kind of private, and also a few of my coaches. I have a team of eight coaches that work with us now, and you have your choice of any of those coaches when you come and study with me and make us part of your support team. So I'm going to wrap things up. I don't see any further comments. Uh, VOHeroes.com slash go is the link that you need to do. I can put it in the comments. Uh, HTTPS colon slash slash VOHeroes.com slash go. Uh, I have been reminded of several times this week that uh, VO Heroes can be very easily misspelled with a, a, a key that is one, just one position away from the O for a very different result. <laughs> so VOHeroes.com slash go. Again, today's the last day to register. I want to help you vanquish your fears. I want to help you succeed. I want to help you prepare yourself to the best of your ability to minimize the potential of the unknown, of failures, to maximize your potential for success. I make absolutely no promises that you will be as successful as Hopper or as successful as uh, Mike Russo or as successful as uh, Bethany or as successful as one of my coaches and former client, uh, Tonya Cornelisi, who was a worldwide uh, voice of Lexus. Um, I, there are plenty of people who, and I don't want you to be one of these people. There are plenty of people who just simply have it on their checkoff, their bucket list. I'm going to go take David's course. I'm going to go to be part of his crew. And then they never actually take any of the classes. I, I, I saw somebody sign up last year and they were very gung ho to do it. And, you know, my system tells me when people take lessons, when people complete courses, when they pass quizzes, when they put up their homework, uh, never came to a single live workout that we hold every single month. We have live workouts with, with coaching and feedback. Opened two of the classes and took one lesson each in the two classes and never opened up the other classes. So... I don't know whether or not they feel like they gave it the old college try and it just didn't work because that happens sometimes. People will purchase something and then never take advantage of it. And to make themselves feel better, they'll blame it on what they purchased. Oh, yeah, it didn't work for me. Yeah, I bought David's VO Heroes Pro thing or whatever it was. Yeah, it didn't work for me. And my question is, how well did you engage with that stuff, with what you purchased? It's not about purchasing it. It's about acquiring it and then using it and then diving in deep. Uh, this is Dave Cooper. Thank you so much. Or Copper. It's actually Copper. Capper. 
I couldn't see very, I'm sorry for mangling your name multiple times. Dave Capper says, thank you for providing so much information. You are my inspiration to do voiceover work. Well, that's great. That's great. I hope you do. Whether you study with me or not, I hope you do. And I and I say the same thing to everybody. I'd love for you to be part of our program. I'd love for you to take advantage of what we have and get all the bonuses and me being your, your coach and consultant and your, and like, I'm accessible in this. I want you to know. It's not like you can't find me. I'm the one doing the, the matriculation work because Rachel's in France with a film that she produced. And so she's not helping me this time around. So I'm the one actually doing the work. I'm the one you're going to be getting emails from. I'm one of the coaching choices that you have. I'm answering a lot of the support questions in our private uh, discussion group. It's not like you see me on these videos and then you never hear from me again. I'm there all the time. Hopper and Mike might be able to attest to that. Um, <clears throat> but what I want you to do is if you decide to join me, that you take advantage of it. Or whoever you decide to work with, walk the journey with, do the work. Take it, take it from purchasing to knowing to doing dive in, get, get dirty, get your hands dirty, you know, make mistakes, fail and learn from your failures. I would love to have you as part of my VO Heroes Pro uh, community. There is so much there. You'll get all the information at voheroes.com slash go. If this is something that you've gotten value from, please share this with other actors or on your timelines or via the Twitter I keep saying the because I keep making fun of people who put the in front of social networks, the Facebook, the YouTube, the Google, the Twitter. Um, Hopper, that was very nice of you. Thank you so much. That's really nice. I appreciate that. I feel that way. And I feel like most of my clients and students are inspired to do that, to actually get in and do the work, not just get the information. So that's great. And, oh, I, th I see what you were saying. I actually am an acting, an actor and a performer as well as teaching. Yes, that's true. Um, in fact, I built my business around the fact that, you know, Monday I have a gig and that comes first. And I teach you to do the same thing. And I want to teach. I want to be that person that helps you get where you want to go, that helps you vanquish your fears, helps you not be afraid of success and hopefully achieve the success that you want. Again, the URL is voheroes.com slash go. I thank you very much for joining me today. I hope that the information we've given you helps you deal with the inevitable fear that you will feel and know that you can enjoy the life of a performer with less of that fear. Please, John, anything else you have? If you're watching this on replay uh, in the comments below, tag me so that I know you've, you've, uh, you've done so. And I'll be happy to pop back here and check it all out. I'm David H. Lawrence, 17th. I thank you so much for watching. And maybe for those of you that are listening, listening, uh, I hope to see you in the VO Heroes Pro curriculum. Go to voheroes.com slash pro, and I will see you soon. Bye.